Okay, we're going to get started here in just a moment. We're uh, doing our best to get Professor Doug Lee on Skype. Uh, one could probably question our choice of uh, methods of getting him here, but in any event, we're going to see if that works. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm actually pleased to say that uh, I, th I think this is the most complete representation uh, actually being physically here in the room that we've we've had in one of these sessions in Beat Space, as Andrew says. Um, and, and so we'll uh, just start out and, qu and quickly to make sure everyone is in the right place. This session uh, is the uh, Open JDK Governing Board Q&A. Um, and so, of course, that means what we're going to do is, is let you guys ask us questions, and then we're going to do our best to um, answer them, right? That's how it works. Okay, and so uh, be, before we do that, we'll just do uh, some very brief introductions. Um, so, hi, I'm George. Uh, George Saab, I'm the chairperson of the, the governing board. Um, I work at Oracle, so uh, I, I'm also the, uh, the vice president of the, uh, the group that works on uh, Java SE and uh, ME and CARD and associated stuff at Oracle. And I'll pass it to Andrew. I'm Andrew Haley. I work at Red Hat, but that's not how I got to be on the governing board. I, hey, there's Doug. All right, Doug. How, how's it going? I'm going to turn it around. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, yeah. Anyway, sorry. Um, it's going to be like that, isn't it? Um, I work for Red Hat, but I'm not on the governing board representing Red Hat. I'm there as, uh, well, I'm there to represent you, really. I'm the at-large member, uh, one of the at-large members, sorry, and along with Doug. And I'm there because uh, I want to represent you and the rest of the Open JDK community. I don't represent Red Hat. No. Okay, go on, go on, don't talk to us. Just try that. D D um, yeah. Hi, I'm Doug Lee. Um, I'm surprised that I'm, I'm here on somebody's phone. Um, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, um, I'm just like Andrew, just like what he says. I'm here to represent you. I, um, I focus on, on academic um, research community, but um, hackers galore. My name is Mark. I work on Java. <coughs> oh, and I work for Oracle. So. My name's not Mark. <laughs> Luckily, I'm. My name is uh, John Dwiovich. I work for IBM. I'm the vice chair of this fine OJDK governing board, and um, I'm a distinguished engineer. And I own all of the runtimes, including Java, at IBM. And since we've been participating since 2011. Somewhere around there. Um, in OpenJDK, and as most of our uh, Java runtime is actually built on all of the class libraries from OpenJDK, we're interested in continuing the innovation at the community with community members from this audience and others. Okay. Questions? <clears throat> lost my voice. All right, so this is a QA. So Before you do the questions. The space, uh, <laughs> let, me, let me just say one. That's the very first time that we have all the governing board here. So for me, it's a great, great it is, thing. It is beyond the excitement. I think I'm so excited, I cannot believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. It's a, it's a great thing. So thank you. OK, and Mario, are you, you going to run around with this thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to need it. Because that one's for Doug. We're going to need it. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Then people will have to yell. All right, Sonny. Yes. Um, so, uh, I live in Hong Kong, so I haven't been here for a couple of years. The last time that this topic was in the full green class databases, how far have you got with that? So, I remember the conversation last time that when something has to be healed, the budget will be put into that. Have we got anywhere with that? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
the question which I should repeat for <laughs> posterity is what's happened about the open bug databases because we were talking about that last time um, or a couple of years ago I think it was yeah um, we're doing okay kind of sort of is is my take on it um, open JDK members can create bugs um, but nobody else can other people go through the Oracle uh, gateway which uh, I think it am I right in thinking that's the general Java bug gateway rather than a specific open JDK bug gateway that probably makes sense because end users don't necessarily know whether the bug that they've got is specifically open JDK or generally Java related there is a problem in that uh, until it's been triaged by staff at Oracle, it's quite hard for people to know uh, what the status of the bug they've just created is. Um, that's an ongoing problem. On the other hand, I think that the high quality bugs that we need in order to be able to act tend to be created by people who are OpenJDK members anyway uh, because they have the requisite knowledge to create all of the information that we need uh, and to produce uh, repeatable test cases and so on. I, I would argue that this still isn't an ideal situation but I do understand the reasons for it. And for posterity, Alexi uh, Shiplov was saying um, the bar actually isn't that high um, to get to author status and, and then be able to get access to, to the database. I should point out the, um, that database is one, and, and I, don't, I don't know exactly which year you were talking about, Sonny, but definitely in the beginning, um, we had a bunch of work to do to actually move from the legacy bug system that had been used by the team at Sun um, to the system which is, is being used today. Um, and so it is the case that you can go and, and look yourself and you know see the bugs, see what's happening, see what responses people have made. Um, and and the, the only thing that, that is a bit of a challenge is if you want to go and report a bug directly um, and you haven't done a bunch of work and made contributions and gotten some level of status in the OpenJDK community, you need to do that through the, the, the um, sort of bug, uh, bug reporting system, um, which is for Java users in general. And um, one of the, the reasons that, that we do have that at the moment is um, we get an immense amount of traffic there. There's really a lot. And, uh, and, and I think it would not be ideal to have all of that uh, traffic going directly into the OpenJDK bug database because there's just so much noise. Yeah, it's like 95% is Minecraft is that's, that's true. <laughs> Um, the, the, sorry, Alexi points out, as I was just about to say, you know, 85, 95% 95 of that are, are, are Minecraft video driver bug reports um, because when the VM crashes, it gives you the URL to that exact page. And millions of people dutifully file their Minecraft crashes. So there, there's, a, there's a third channel that's worth mentioning. It's, it's, not, you know, it's, not, it's not a huge source, but it's not uncommon for developers who are familiar with, with OpenJDK as a community but not real active, they'll show up on a mailing list and say, hey, I've got this problem. And then somebody who does have access to the database says, oh, yeah, that's a problem. And they basically create the bug for it. And that, that happens on an informal basis pretty frequently, I think. Yeah. So if you're a member wannabe, find a friend to follow your bug. Could you say that again, Doug? I said if, you're, if you would like to be a member, um, because you um, you found a bug and you'd like to help fix it, the easiest path is find somebody else who's already a member. They can file the bug, and then you can collect um, um, brownie points for your membership. Well, yeah, and, and that's basically the algorithm for how to get involved is you you find somebody to help you. That's that's true for for many things. Yeah. Yeah. A different question in the back. Uh, 
In terms of non x86 platforms, how are we doing? Spark is doing great. How are we? I'm trying to remember what he said. <laughs> how are we doing in terms of uh, was it features and testing and quality for them? Yeah. Um, well, let's just go through the platforms. Uh, the non x86 OpenJDK platforms, there's PowerPC, S390X, uh, ARCH64, and Spark. Um, oh, no. Yes, I suppose so. Some people think it's uh, uh, It's awesome. Um, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. The. ARM32 stroke 64 uh, port and the Spark port are also tested by Oracle, correct? Um, the Spark port certainly is. Okay. The ARM, yeah, that combined one is, is too. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Outside there, we have a number of partnerships uh, in the community uh, for things like the ARCH64 port. Uh, S390X, I don't know. I mean, you guys must be testing it, right? Um, along with the PowerPC, we're doing testing at Red Hat. I mean, one thing I can guarantee you is that we're running the regression tests and we're running TCKs. So we do know that the uh, other other ports are compatible. What we don't have uh, outside Oracle is the big bunch of heavyweight applications, which I believe uh, you all are doing regular regression tests on. And it's something of a challenge for the community to pull together a whole bunch of big stuff uh, that we can uh, use for testing. Um, yes, that's still very much a work in progress. And in order to get everything up to the same sort of high, high level of quality, we're going to have to uh, do more of that in the open. And I understand. I mean, that a lot of your tests are, that you do internally are proprietary anyway, so can't easily be opened up. Okay, I'm not entirely sure I understand what... I think I know what he's talking about. So, Doug, I, I think you're asking, um, why don't we have HTTPS on, on, I, on you know, at the very least for, so, so that people, people can download the source code securely and have some assurance that there's no man in the middle uh, giving them source, source code with bugs. Uh, th this has been, been bugging me for quite a while. <laughs> Um, and it's something that I've, I've been meaning to talk to the, the infra team about. Uh, just haven't gotten around to it yet. We should do HTTPS, preferably only on all of the OpenJDK infrastructure. We, we already do it on the on the bug database, I believe. Um, but uh, but for, for all the rest, we, we should we should do the same thing. Uh, so we we need we just need need to work it out with the infra team, and the you know we we need to do a few internal Oracle approvals to get. The certificates minted, but that's pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Doing pretty good. You got any complaints about the website? <laughs> That's all you got. Volker. Oh, so, uh, yeah, during the last years, I was always complaining a lot, so this year I'm quite satisfied with. Uh, Big go. Whoa. <laughs> Vol Volker says he's quite satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> is usually the guy who stands up and he's got a list <laughs> and he reads from the list and, and he's go, as he goes down that list you know you, you, we're, we're all up here like oh 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 no oh oh, oh. <laughs> okay, so I have maybe just one question this year um, recently there we had a problem on the open GDK mailing list somebody claimed that uh, the class library had a check in with some code from uh, Stack Overflow and I was no check and I think in the end it turned out that uh, 
the guy who was uh, well, published his course in Stegolfo was also an oil employee, so it turned out to be not so that such a big problem. But my question is, are there any plans to do something like code scans or to uh, impose some more checks on code which is something like Apache or a Jitsi game? Are there any plans to do code scans to catch code coming in that maybe shouldn't be coming in because its provenance is, is unknown or uncertain? Xerxes, do you have another question or did you want to comment on that? Another question. Another, okay, you're just being very diligent. Very good. Well, <laughs> you, you can rest your We got we'll you. Get you. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe you've got a cramp and you're stretching. That's fine too. Um, yeah, so the, the, the whole co ho yeah, code provenance and all, and all that. We don't, we, Oracle doesn't have any current plans to do any more. Um, I, you know, do we, you know, do we uh, as a governing board need to encourage someone to have plans for this? Um, you know, so far the honor system has worked pretty well. We, you know, we did catch that one. That one John, John wants it's to get a short, we got a lot of lawyers. We scan the shellac out of everything. So if you didn't think it's being scanned, it is by us. <laughs> however, <laughs> uh, however, thank you, IBM. Well, you're welcome. You're welcome. The, but it would make it would make good sense because the province of the code stuff happens. I think we should have some policy would help us for sure, but probably helps others because there's a lot of ways to get the wrong code in the wrong place and. You guys are probably motivated the same. I'm surprised you're not scanning it or you're not admitting it. But uh, here, admit it. Um, well, I, w I will say that um, there are a couple of things. I think uh, in general, um, code scans are done whenever you know when, whenever Oracle does an acquisition, we look at the, all of the inbound IP, and so that certainly was done. In fact, it was quite humorous when that was initially done on the JDK code because it, it immediately came up with you know lots and lots of warnings of things that were in some other bit of code because <laughs> yes. they were in the JDK, <laughs> um, and and so so that's uh, that's kind of interesting. No, 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 no. I mean, because it was actually, you know, code that was in the JDK, which is a known bit of code that's out there that people shouldn't be copying and using, except this was the JDK. So, um, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, thanks, Black Duck. <clears throat> um, in, in any event, um, I think, you know, one thing that's worth keeping in mind, I think, you know, many of the folks who work um, in the OpenJDK community, um, work at companies who have pretty strict rules around this kind of thing and are, are, are pretty used to that. Um, I, I think that you know, we do have some people who are uh, sort of individuals who come in and work that you know, may not be as used to that. It certainly is the case that the OCA has information about what's expected. So you know, when you sign up and say, I'm going to, you know, I want to be a contributor to the OpenJDK, one of the things that you're saying is, I'm going to be diligent myself about not taking code from somewhere and and you know kind of contributing code that's not mine to to uh, to do with, um, and and so so I think there already is that um, you know whether whether we it makes sense to put something more in there I think you know we've seen kind of one case where we had a question um, you know possibly surprisingly I I don't think we're aware of any others and and so you know m my feeling would be. And you know we're kind of having a governing board discussion here in real time. Um, is, is that you know unless we start to see that this is something that's clearly a problem, um, we don't necessarily need to worry about introducing additional friction. So yeah, yeah. Well, like, friction well, um, policy when it comes up. Otherwise. Well, whenever, whenever whenever these things seem like they might um, require involvement by lawyers in, in creating yet more process documents, um, we cringe because um, that's Open JDK governing board at its worst. Um, we don't do anything because it takes so long to do anything. Um, um, and, and a great example of that is, um, is, is something I thought I'd bring up since nobody, nobody asked yet, is the the brand new and thank God um, it's finally um, proposed um, um, CSR um, project, which was just announced this week um, and um, and is sure to go in effect. And this is a finally an open JDK process that um, corresponds to the the evil secret um, um, society of of, uh, of CCC that um, people lived in fear from. 
and now we have we will have a uh, a, a process for doing that without a huge process document. I am so so um, proud of Mark of figuring out how to put this into effect without writing a hundred pages about what it does. Just saying, uh, basically, it does whatever the, the sponsoring group would like it to do. Um, I think it's us at our best, and I want to publicly congratulate Mark for, for, for finally putting it together. All right. I think he's going to call the color you Trump orange this morning, though, so I'm not sure that's on the charts. Yeah, it, it's, so. it's a joke that I think we've made every year. Um, and it, there's a danger of us getting to the end of the session without saying this, so I'll say it again. That in an ideal world, our job as a governing board is really not to do anything. Um, we hope that the various sub-communities within Open JDK will be self-organising, and they almost entirely are. Uh, yes, there are infrastructure issues which tend to cross boundaries of teams and groups and organisations and all the rest of it. but. We're, we're just there to make sure that the subgroups and all of the uh, stakeholders have what they need in order to organise themselves. We don't want to run people's lives for them. Yeah, okay. Um, this is all to do with making binaries available. This has always been a very vexed question. Um, I, I think there are lots of really, really good technical reasons why that is very, very difficult to do. And indeed, the binary may not necessarily work on your system either. Um, could Oracle do it? Would Oracle want to do it? P publish, uh, pu publish early access binaries on a more frequent basis? Uh, un under what license is always the question. <laughs> right, I, I think uh, or Oracle, uh, you know, we, we've, we've had directions from the business side that shipping binaries under the GPL is, is not something that, that Oracle wants to see. But we, I haven't, you know, I haven't asked that question again for a couple of years, but I got a pretty firm answer the first time I, I asked it. Uh, so I, you know, we, we, we've, ar we've already been thinking that, uh, that, that for, for 10, it would make sense for Oracle to publish nightlies um, or hourlies, you know, or whatever's on, on a much more frequent automated basis. Uh, and of course, the Oracle JDK is not, it's 99% open JDK, right? It's mm. not that different. Um, but it's under the BCL, which some people won't be able to accept. Uh, maybe, maybe other organizations uh, you know, could, can step up and provide binaries under, under other license terms. Do, Doug, did you want to reply to this? So okay, so so Doka is pointing out that that, that that Debian Experimental, and um, and and Ubuntu's, uh, what was the Ubuntu one? Okay, so so the the, the current current development line in Ubuntu will have Open JDK binaries. Are those updated frequently? Mostly weekly. So that's another source. Are these Linux binaries or specific to Ubuntu? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think you just saw the reason you don't get a nightly binary from OpenJDK because there are at least five builds that you're talking about. We have a, another one, maybe I'll be the sixth, and they're, they are nightly available and depends on where. And so, one, two, so everyone's building from source and there is no binary distribution uh, from OpenJDK that, that everyone can then uh, unify on. So that is an opportunity if the community would like to do a bind distribution project, but uh, I don't see why that wouldn't be a problem to just go build it. But each of the five of the 
companies still do theirs, and we all have separate builds. So I think that's where you're seeing the challenge. But hmm? yeah, so so yeah, and so everyone goes, yeah, there's nine niece, mine, 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 and mine. Or well, you guys have the common one. And maybe Doug has a nightly. I don't know. So even Doug is crazy to have a nightly. So I don't know. But the, there is because the, you know because you want to did it work last night? And the answer is where? What code did you get? What do these experimental guys have in there? So it's it's kind of a mysterious thing. So maybe there really could be a community effort around it. Not a bad story. So, but you know, and we have of course a bigger problem. We have all sorts of additional code that's not part of the core yet. So hopefully we'll, we can fix that too. So maybe related to this question, would you publish some uh, test results for your own? Make this thing you. He's warming up. The list yeah. is <laughs> <laughs> So uh, related to this question, you, you publish not only the, your Oracle binary builds, uh, you also publish test results, which is good. But you only publish the results like which from the, of the regression test suite. But you only publish which results pass and which don't pass. And uh, it would be good if you publish the exact uh, test details, the, the, the files, the JTR files, because a lot, of, yes, I spoke with Rory about this, and uh, I just wanted to bring this to your attention that a lot of tests, I mean, maybe they get not executed on your hardware, on your platform, and the result, it's always okay. So you, if the test, okay, the test passes, it, it can mean it wasn't executed, it executed without errors, or something in between so a, a better uh, publication would be would be good with more details no that, that, that that's a good point um, publishing JTR files you te technically I don't think would be hard we would probably run afoul of some of the same issues we were, were having with the experimental submission forests in that we have to scrub test logs for internal host names and other stuff that we're just not allowed to to reveal, but maybe maybe we can somehow combine those two efforts, and if we have a, a general test, you know, test result scrubbing filter, we can use it in both systems. So yeah, it's a good idea. I think we're coming towards the end of our slot, and FOSD and staff are going to get rather impatient with us. So while this is all very interesting, I don't want to stop anybody talking. If there's one more really quick question, and then I think we're done. Go on. Uh, with uh, additional ports uh, coming into OpenJDK, uh, AR64, and PPC, if there is a, a security issue uh, to to report, um, there's different owners. Who should I talk to? Okay, so that's um, that's actually uh, one of the things that Mark discussed um, earlier today uh, was the work that we've been doing on um, proposing an OpenJDK vulnerability group, and I think we're we're you know just just about there. There's sort of one last detail that I'm I'm trying to get pinned down and worked out, um, but but the intent of that is basically that we have a place where it's very easy for anyone who finds something to come and report an issue so that all of the people who are involved um, you know, and potentially uh, can, can help in fixing that issue are um, able to uh, find out about it and to sort of work with the rest of that group and actually being able to find a solution. Um, and so, so I, I think that's kind of how we'll try to work that out. And we have a little bit of a, you know, sort of guidelines of, you know, what people might be people that would join that group and certainly, you know, having responsibility for a, you know, a popular port or something like that would be one of those things. Um, I think another is, you know, we've seen this happen um, fairly often where there's some possibly, you know, relatively obscure branch of the class libraries or something where a bug comes up and we really need to be able to find the world's expert on that. Um, and, you know, that's not something you want to be doing when there's, you know, potentially a zero-day vulnerability happening, right? So a lot of this is trying to get that all mapped out and, and sort of worked in advance of potential issues coming in so that you're able to act really quickly and, and we can do that as a, as a community uh, in order to, to keep all of our users safe. Does that help? I think... That's um, what and, I, think I had in mind when I said we sometimes move way too slowly yeah. if, there, if there needs to be lawyers and very careful wording 
Um, things just don't go fast in Open JDK. Sorry. Yeah, and I, I think Doug's Doug's right about that. Um, you know, what I what I will say for this particular area is that one of the things that's contributed to it is, um, you know, the need to have lawyers from multiple parties kind of review it in in the interest of trying to make it as good and tight an agreement as as it can be. But also, um, I think because we actually do have some something that works today, it works non-optimally, and it's mostly non-optimal. Um, for Oracle, because at the end of the day, you know, we end up actually often having to have discussions with multiple parties one-on-one, -on -one, which really should be everyone getting together in a room and discussing. So it ends up being, you know, far more difficult and expensive um, for us than certainly I would like it to be. Um, and and so that's one of the reasons we've been pushing for this. But it's it's taken a while, and you know, Doug's Doug's completely right on that one. I think in the meantime. Um, you know what? What we what, what I can say is uh, we have seen situations where people are unsure of where to report a bug, and then typically what happens is one of two things: um, if they're smart, hopefully they figure out where they got a build from, and they report it to wh whoever that is. Um, if it's Oracle, if it's IBM, if it's you know Red Hat or or Azul or or whomever. Um, and and then I think you know those folks try to deal with those responsibly as as they can. Um, in some cases, we've sort of seen people scratching their heads and then, you know, posting, you know, details of a, secu a, p a potential security vulnerability on mailing public mailing lists, which is not an a good idea. Like, don't do that, please. Um, you know, while people want to hear hear about the issues and try to fix them, um, you know, we don't we don't want all of the details of those publicly known because the bad guys are looking too. So. That's the, so what I would say for right now is I, th I think the best thing for people to do is try to report it to the, the people that they got a binary from. And I know, you know if you're in the business of doing that, um, it, you know, it, it's a good idea where you have downloads to also have information about how to report issues and how in particular to, to treat security issues. Another way of saying that is even though we do not have good rules in place, we have some good people in place Things are not as bad as they could be. Yeah, things are not as bad as they could be. And I think that is a really excellent time to end this session. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, Doug. Hey, Doug. All right, Doug. We'll talk to you soon. Take care. All right. Cheers.